Okay, this is the GRL8-01. This company sells hundreds of, well not hundreds, they have a very large variety of different controllers that um, can do different relay functions. Very valuable for process control. And I went to hook this thing up. <clears throat> the instructions are kind of terrible. They show how you can have it hooked up in one way versus the other here. So I hooked it up with just um, level one and I could not get this thing to work no matter what I did. So it's really starting to, to bother me. So for whatever reason, this was not possible. And essentially what you need to do to get it to work is you have to have both the minimum and the common submerged in the water. I'm just doing a test to get the thing proofed out. And then in order to get the relay to fire, you have to submerge the maximum. And this is a fluid level control relay. So when I put this in here, that red light's gonna go on. And what that just did was activated the number 11, either turned off the number 12 or turned on the number 14. In this case, if we were filling up a tank, we would have the pump hooked up to number 12. Now that um, this light is on, the pump is now turned off and it stops filling up the tank. So let's say now we start to use up the fluid in that tank. And when that fluid gets used up, we want the pump to turn back on. So when this red light turns off, that pump's gonna go back on. Red light's off, the pump is back on. And so now when fluid goes back into the tank and it hits the bottom probe, nothing happens. That's what we want. And when the tank is filled back up, the level eventually hits the upper probe that's connected to max there on two level control. And the relay fires. Now the diagram shows the common submerged and the max being your level indicator. Well, nothing happens when you do that. All right, so let's say you wanted to use this in an application where you had a tank and you didn't want the level to drop really far. Like say in a boiler, you wanna maintain a certain tank level. Like let's say you wanted an electronic ball valve or a float valve. You could kinda, of, you know, arrange these in a float valve setup, but it's better to just have both wires connected to the system using a spark plug for a seal or whatever and then use the common wire to shut the solenoid off when the water level is appropriate. Rather than the other situation which is what they have here where This would activate and then it stays on until the fluid level comes down to that next probe, which I'm mimicking here. Be nice to know so you don't gotta have a bunch of spark plugs hooked up to stuff. Using spark plugs won't always work. You can't have a resistor spark plug for this. It's only five volts, so yeah, I don't like that. So this is the way to do it. So you have the common and the maximum probe submerged. And then this probe here is gonna fire your solenoid or whatever valve you have to put water in the tank. So this is what I would use on a boiler system to maintain a consistent tank level. And you got a lot of boiling and splashing and you don't want the tank level to drop a lot. I was gonna try and use this thing for a flame sensor but that didn't work out, but that's pretty much how you hook this thing up. This is a 120 volts connected to the uh, A1 and A2 down here. And as I said, I couldn't get anything to happen out of this. All right, so that's all I got on this, guys. Uh, this really isn't for entertainment. It's, I'm probably gonna come back to this in five years and type in this information trying to learn how to use this thing and I'm going to end up with my own freaking video. It happens all the time, especially working on cars.